Good morning. Good morning. I feel like we're a little off center here today. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, Daily Devotions with Pastor Sutton on Friday. It's Friday morning at last. Why do I care? It's Friday. Friday is just like Monday, except on the other side of the weekend. Anyway, good morning. It is cold. I don't care who you are, where you are, it's cold. Um, it's uh, th- Well, I'm showing 13 below on the weather service. I didn't look at the thermometers. I know when I got up this morning, it was like 19 below uh, here in, in Irma. Well, Bonnie's saying 17 below. It's cold. I don't care. I, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, it's cold. Um, it's winter, you know. That's kind of how winter works, right? Um, so it burr, burr. Um, even here in the house, I'm I'm cold. Uh, well, my study tends to be a little on the colder side anyway. It's on an outside wall. Uh, but good morning. Friday morning, Jan- February 3rd. We survived Groundhog Day. I never did hear um, what Punxsutawney Phil did or didn't do, but I imagine he saw his shadow. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, if, if, if he sees his shadow, um, winter is going to take a month and a half to go away. If he doesn't, it's six weeks. So, you know, I, it, I, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what, what, uh, happens there in, in, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, it's just cold. And that's why, but next week here in Wisconsin, it's supposed to be 30 degrees. Um, we're going to have a balmy couple of days. So it's going to make up for this. So, well, let's see who's here with us this morning. No, no commemorations or anything today. Yesterday, the uh, purification of Mary and presentation of Jesus, candle mass, um, but nothing today. Glenn, good morning to you. Kathy, good morning. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Oh, 50 degrees down in Florida. Well, mm mm-hmm. Michael, good morning. Oh, now, see, Bob and Jeannie are saying 50, and you're saying 71. Um, maybe maybe it's going to get up to 71, or maybe Bob and Jeannie are somewhere else now. Uh, Ann and, whoops, there it jumped on me. Uh, Ann and Deb and Grant, good morning to you guys. Jerry, good morning. 12 degrees. Let's see, if I took uh, my temperature and I... Yeah, you're as far above zero as we are below. So um, that's like 25 degrees or something like that. <laughs> Difference. Renee, good morning. Uh, bitterly cold here in Michigan, 8 degrees right now, but it's supposed to be 45. Well, that, whatever snow you have will start melting. Um, Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. And uh, Connie and Robin, good morning. 23 below in Harshaw this morning. Well, there you go. There you go. That's cold. I don't. I don't care. I don't care what you say. It's it's cold all over. But you know, it's it's February. We're in the north. That's just how things are. There's. I got a few more people here after I refreshed my screen. Jill and John. Good morning to you guys. There's Bonnie popping in and Leela. Good morning and John. John. Good morning. If Janet's nearby, good morning to her as well. Well, let's uh, let's get down to the business of the day here. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, I've got my treasure, tre- treasury of daily prayer right here. <clears throat> and so, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 47, Psalm 47. Uh, in its entirety, all, what, nine verses. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout. 
the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It's a psalm of praise, obviously, uh, of, of praise to uh, our God, um, the King over all the earth and the heavens and all that dwell therein, um, a King over the princes of the peoples of the God and, and the people of the God of Abraham. He is uh, the shield, uh, and he is our God and is to be highly exalted. And not a lot else to say about that psalm. It's just simply as that, saying praise to God. And, you know, it's a psalm, which is the, the psalms are the song book of the, of the Bible. And uh, so it is, a, it is a song of praise to our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on to our reading, Zechariah, chapter 14, verses 1 to 21. Um, all of this is in that prose uh, layout, so it's 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 not poetry or imagery. It is just uh, the 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 burden of Zechariah, the prophecy now now spoken by by him, which we'll get into here after I lubricate. <clears throat> Zechariah fourteen, starting at verse one. Behold, a day is coming for the Lord when the spoil taken from you will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses plundered, and the women raped. Ooh. Half of the city shall go out into exile, but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. On that day his feet shall be stand on the Mount of Olives, that lies before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley, so that one half of the mount shall move northward and the other half southward. And you shall flee to the valley of my mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to us all. And you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake on the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, then the Lord my God will come, and all the holy ones with him. On that day there shall be no light, cold, or frost, and there shall be a unique day, which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time there shall be light. On that day living waters shall flow out from Jerusalem, half of them to the eastern sea and half of them to the western sea, it shall continue in summer as in winter. And the Lord will be king over all the earth. On that day, the Lord will be one and his name one. The whole land shall be turned into a plain from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem. But Jerusalem shall remain aloft on its site from the gate of Benjamin to the place of the former gate, to the corner gate. And from the tower of Hananel to the king's wine presses, and it shall be inhabited, for there shall never again be a decree of utter destruction. Jerusalem shall dwell in security, and this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the peoples that wage war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they are standing on their feet, their eyes will rot in their sockets and their tongues will rot in their mouths. And on that day, a great panic from the Lord shall fall on them, so that each will seize the hand of another, and the hand of the one will be raised against the hand of the other. Even Judah will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be collected, gold, silver, and garments in great abundance. And a plague like this plague shall fall on the horses, 
the mules, the camels, the donkeys, and whatever beasts may be in those camps. Then everyone who survives all the nations, everyone who survives of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Booths. And if any of the families of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain on them. And if the family of Egypt does not go up and present themselves, then on them there shall be no rain. There shall be the plague with which the Lord afflicts the nations that do not go up to, the, to keep the Feast of Booths. This shall be the punishment to Egypt and to the punishment all the nations that do not go up to keep the Feast of Booths. And on that day there shall be inscribed on the bells of the horses, Holy to the Lord. And the pots in the house of the Lord shall be as bowls before the altar. And every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holy to the Lord of hosts, so that all who sacrifice may come and take of them and boil the meat of sacrifice in them. And there shall no longer be a traitor in the house of the Lord of hosts on that day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hmm, now what's that all about? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, this follows on, this fo follows on the, um, the coming of the Christ. And it's clearly the, the second coming. Now, what of this, what of this division of the nation of, of the, uh, against Jerusalem, um, half the city going into exile and the rest of the city being cut off? I am, I am perplexed. I am amused and confused and dazed and wondering. Time to get out the study Bible here. Um, you know, that's, uh, you gotta, you gotta understand. Pastors don't know everything. Um, Sometimes we need a little guidance uh, on these things, and I, you know, I, I guess you, you know the 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 study of God's word is an ongoing thing, and and the Old Testament gets honestly gets neglected uh, so often by us in our studies. I, um, not forgotten. I mean, we we have a general a general. Uh, gist of it. I mean, we know what it's about. Um, you know, on Zephaniah, on Zechariah. Um, we know what it's about. We know what it's saying, what it's doing. Come on now. Um, but I am sometimes perplexed because of the, this isn't imagery. This is, as I said, this is prose. And so this isn't imagery. This is things that are projected to happen, but what do they mean? Um, well, the day is coming for the Lord to act, to reveal his power, and the division of spoil gained by enemies when they attack Jerusalem is described prior to the battle. Uh, the headline comes before the event. Um, okay, so so this this attacking of the city uh, the commentators would say that it's not an actual historical attack on Jerusalem, which is good because I don't recall having heard of such thing, but a reminder um, that God does allow uh, afflictions to come upon his people, which is, that's very true. Um, that's the bearing the cross, uh, suffering, suffering afflictions. Um, and um, now... And, 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 the, and the Lord does go out to fight against those nations as he fights on the day of battle. Uh, when, when, when Israel faces an enemy, it's not, it, it's not Israel who wins the battle. It, it is the Lord who wins the battle uh, for them. You know? And we, we see that in different places earlier in the, in the Old Testament where God's people go to war against an enemy. And uh, even though they're vastly outnumbered, um, they win the day. And it's not because they're great or anything like that. It's not the strength of the horse or the power of a man 
or the, the, the durability of their steel in their swords, but rather the Lord does it. Um, uh, hmm. Standing on the Mount of Olives, split in two, God has the power to cause cosmic upheaval. See Micah 1.4. Well, yeah, okay. It, he's the creator of heaven and earth, so he can do whatever he wants. Um, um, and and this, this, as we got towards the middle here, a unique day, which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time there shall be light. And, and we know that when Christ returns, everyone will know it. Right. Um, in another place, it says, with the with the sound of the trumpet and the cry of an archangel, uh, he will return. Um, and um, the name of God will be on on every tongue. Right. So the Lord, um, the Lord will be king over all the earth. And on that day, the Lord will be one and his name will be one. Um, the, the, the name of God will be in everybody's mouth is what what is being said there. Um but there's other geographical changes going on. Uh, oh, I see. All right. So the prophet envisions further geographical changes as he seeks to picture God's new earth. The mountains of Judah become a plain. Um, uh, the exact location of Ramon is not known, but it's somewhere in the southern border. Uh, Jerusalem remains aloft as the high high point uh, of the nation with its walls and its gates, right? The... the um, in another vision, Isaiah sees the city of God coming out of out of the heavens, or is that in Revelation? Isaiah 65 and uh, Revelation kind of has some corollaries, places where they match up. Um, what it comes down to, I think what it's really coming down to here um, in this reading is that... Um, Christ returns. I think this is the return of Christ. This is the, the day of judgment. Um, and uh, it, it's a little misleading. The, the, the words here, the prophet, um, as, he's, as he's moving from a vision of the way things are to the way things will be, um, he almost makes it sound like the sun comes and makes the earth that we live in uh, a better place, right? The the rivers running either way and Jerusalem high and the plains and the mountains splitting and things like that. But that's destruction. That's destruction and, and recreation. Um, and we know from Isaiah and from Revelation um, and and even from Christ that all these things are passing away, that the, that the world we live in will be destroyed first uh, at the return of Christ and then made anew. Um, sin taken out of it uh, and being perfect. Um, and those those who are, attack Jerusalem, um, Jerusalem is God's people, the place of the dwelling place of God and his people. And those who ta attack Jerusalem, those who are outside Christ, if you will, uh, will suffer a plague. They'll suffer eternity, right? Um, their, their, their world will be terrible. And those who don't worship the Lord uh, will suffer here it says no rain, but think about it. No rain means a drought, and a drought means uh, suffering. No food, no supply, no bounty, no no land of milk and honey. Um, um, even even the animals. The animals are kind of interesting to me. Why why the animals? Um, yeah, the, the the plague falls not only on the enemy soldiers, but on animals used for war. Um, Enemies of God's kingdom will be utterly destroyed, I guess. And that's that's exactly it, right? Because on the last day when when the crucified Christ, the crucified, resurrected, and ascended Christ returns, uh, he said he will be with us to the ends of the age, and that's in word and sacrament. But on the day that he, he physically returns his presence here amongst us uh, in his glory, uh, he will return as you saw him ascend, so he will also return in clouds. Uh, on that day, the, the whole thing gets shaken up. Um, uh, Paul says, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, but uh, those who are asleep will be raised from their grave, and we too will be, will be raised on that day. Everyone, uh, everyone will, will die before the end and uh, raised to eternal life. 
uh, some some to the to, some to the eternal life of joy and in, in the presence of Christ Jesus. That's our salvation through Christ, uh, and some to the to the eternal shame of of eternal suffering and death. Um, that's it's kind of the way it is. There's no in between. There's no middle ground. Either you either you are perishing, uh, doubting what Christ has done, or you are alive. Uh, now and always in what Christ has given you, because it's what He did. It's it's His death and resurrection that saves us, and uh, the faith and confidence He has given us in that promise that saves us. And so we cling, we cling to that cross for our forgiveness, and we cling to Christ for our salvation. Uh, that's what we've been given. And so Zechariah, here in chapter fourteen, is given an image of that day in which the Lord comes, uh, and he does his best, again, um, this burden that he bears, this prophecy, he does the best he can to put God's words and the images that he's he's received in this vision from God into language that we and the people around him can comprehend. Um, but we, we have, even though all these terrible things, earthquakes and, and uh, lack of rain and and plague, rotting, rotting flesh, um, all of these things are for those who are outside Christ. In Christ, um, in Christ uh, will be joy. Uh, on that day there shall be inscribed on the bells of horses, holy to the Lord, and the pots in the house of the Lord shall be as bowls before the altar, and every pot in Jerusalem uh, and Judah shall be holy to the Lord of hosts, so that all who may who sacrifice may come and take them and boil the meat of sacrifice in them and there shall no longer be a traitor in the house of the Lord uh, of hosts on that day. God's grace will be upon all those who now live in His kingdom. Um, even as we live now in suffering, then we will live in joy and peace in the presence of our Lord. That's the promise we have uh, in, in 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 eternal worship. Of him on that last day. Um, that's the promise. That's the promise we have and the promise in which we rest. Amen. Let's look to our, our prayer of the day for this February 3rd. Oh Lord, we pray that your grace may always go before and follow after us, that we may be continually given to all good works through Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh, and tomorrow we get to start reading Job. Ooh, Job. Go, Job. Go, Job. Let's continue with the, uh, with the uh, Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Friday morning, uh, a prayer with a focus of, and lead us not into temptation. O Lord, faithful God, you gave your holy law not to ensnare or torment us, but to show us pure righteousness. Yet the sinful nature inherited from Adam seizes the opportunity in me to act on temptation and to disobey. You promise in your word that you will not allow us to be tempted beyond our ability and that you graciously provide a way out. In his earthly ministry, your son, our dear Lord Jesus, resisted the devil for over 40 long days and nights of fasting and struggle. By triumphing in perfect righteousness and then humbly suffering and dying on the cross, 
He is one for me and all believers, the forgiveness of our many grievous sins. He wants me, he, he grants me new life through the water and word of holy baptism. And in his gospel, I find the power of God for my salvation. As this new day begins, increase my love for your word, for it is a light to my path and the way out of temptation snares. Through your means of grace, increase my strength to stand firm in the confession of Christ. For your holy word and sacraments alone can remove me from the darkness of the devil and the world and set me firm upon the rock that is Christ. Put to death all the sinful passions that remain in my flesh, so that I may desire only those things which are pleasing to you. This in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And, uh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your mercy upon those who suffer, all in the world, who, who for whether it be, whether it be under uh, famine or hunger, or whether it be uh, suffering uh, following natural disasters, or whether it simply be illness, age, or infirmity. We ask that you hear their prayer and strengthen them in their time that they call. Those who do not call upon you, we ask that you would call them, that they might have that same grace and mercy that we've received through your Son. We pray especially on this day for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, Renee, John, and all those who call upon you and ask your prayer. Hear them, Lord, even as they pray in your Son's name, as we do the same, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey, Mushtaq. Good evening, brother. Uh... That brings our devotion to a close for this Friday morning. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Saturday morning, for our daily devotion together. A little time for you and I to spend in God's word as we anticipate that day of his return. God's peace be with you.